a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. The Pirate Bay The Pirate Bay is an online index of digital content of entertainment media and software. Founded in 2003 by Swedish think tank Pirat Byron, the Pirate Bay allows visitors to search, download, and contribute magnet links. and torrent files, which facilitate peer-to-peer -peer file sharing among users of the BitTorrent protocol. In April 2009, the website's founders were found guilty in the Pirate Bay trial in Sweden for assisting in copyright infringement, and were sentenced to serve one year in prison and pay a fine. In some countries, internet service providers have been ordered to block access to the website. Subsequently, proxy websites have been providing access to it. Founders Svartholm, Nage, and Sunda were all released by 2015 after having served shortened sentences. The Pirate Bay has sparked controversies and discussion about legal aspects of file sharing, copyright, civil liberties, and has become a platform for political initiatives against established intellectual property laws and a central figure in an anti-copyright movement. The website faced several shutdowns and domain seizures switching to a series of new web addresses to continue operating. History The Pirate Bay was established in September 2003 by the Swedish anti-copyright organization Pirat Byron. It has been run as a separate organization since October 2004. The Pirate Bay was first run by Gottfried Svartholm and Frederick Nage, who are known by their nicknames, Anna Carter, and Tiamo, respectively. They have both been accused of assisting in making copyrighted content available by the Motion Picture Association of America. On 31 May 2006, the website's servers in Stockholm were raided and taken away by Swedish police, leading to three days of downtime. The Pirate Bay claims to be a non-profit entity based in the Seychelles. However this is disputed. The Pirate Bay has been involved in a number of lawsuits, both as plaintiff and as defendant. On 17 April 2009, Peter Sunder, Frederick Nage, Gottfried Svartholm, and Carl Lundström were found guilty of assistance to copyright infringement and sentenced to one year in prison and payment of a fine of 30 million sec. After a trial of nine days, the defendants appealed the verdict and accused the judge of giving in to political pressure. On 26 November 2010, a Swedish appeals court upheld the verdict, decreasing the original prison terms, but increasing the fine to 46 million sec. On 17 May 2010, because of an injunction against their bandwidth provider, the site was taken offline. Access to the website was later restored with a message making fun of the injunction on their front page. On 23 June 2010, the group Pirat Byron disbanded due to the death of Ubi Kopami Batani, a prominent member and co-founder of the group. The Pirate Bay was hosted for several years by PRQ, a Sweden-based company, owned by creators of TPB Gottfried Svartholm and Fredrik Nage. PRQ is said to provide highly secure, no-questions-asked hosting services to its customers. From May 2011, Sirius Tubes Networks started providing network connectivity to the Pirate Bay. On 23 January 2012, the Pirate Bay added the new category Physibles. These are 3D files described as data objects that are able to become physical using a 3D printer. In May 2012, as part of Google's newly inaugurated Transparency Report, the company reported over 6,000 formal requests to remove Pirate Bay links from the Google Search Index. Those requests covered over 80,500 URLs, with the five copyright holders having the most requests consisting of Freutel Services LLC, Bang Brothers, Takedown Piracy LLC, Amateur Teen Kingdom, and International Federation of the Phonographic Industry. On 10 August 2013, the Pirate Bay announced the release of Pirate Browser, a free web browser used to circumvent internet censorship. The site was the most visited torrent directory on the World Wide Web from 2003 until November 2014, 
when Kikar Storrance had more visitors according to Alexa. On 8 December 2014, Google removed most of the Google Play apps from its app store that have the Pirate Bay in the title. On 9 December 2014, the Pirate Bay was raided by the Swedish police, who seized servers, computers, and other equipment. Several other torrent-related sites including EZTV, Zoink, Turridge and the Estol Tracker were also shut down in addition to the Pirate Bay's forum Supway.org. On the second day after the raid EZTV was reported to be showing signs of life, with uploads to Extra Torrent and Kickass Torrents and supporting proxy sites like stvproxy.net via the main website's backend IP addresses. Several copies of the Pirate Bay went online during the next several days, most notably oldpiratybay.org, created by ISO Hunt, on the 19th of May 2015. The .sa domain of the Pirate Bay was ordered to be seized following a ruling by a Swedish court. The site reacted by adding six new domains in its place. The judgment was appealed on the 26th of May 2015. On the 12th of May 2016 the appeal was struck down and the court ruled the domains be turned over to the Swedish state. The site returned to using its original .org domain in May 2016. In August 2016, the US government shut down Kikas Torrents, which resulted in the Pirate Bay becoming once again the most visited BitTorrent website. Content The Pirate Bay allows users to search for magnet links. These are used to reference resources available for download via peer-to-peer -peer networks which, when opened in a BitTorrent client, begin downloading the desired content. Small files that contain metadata necessary to download the data files from other users. The torrents are organized into categories, audio, video, applications, games, porn, and other. Registration requires an email address and is free. Registered users may upload their own torrents and comment on torrents. According to a study of newly uploaded files during 2013 by Torrent Freak, 44% of uploads were television shows and movies, porn was in second place with 35% of uploads, and audio made up 9% of uploads. The website features a browse function that enables users to see what is available in broad categories like audio, video, and games, as well as subcategories like audiobooks, high res movies, and comics. Since January 2012, it also features a Fizzables, category for 3D printable objects. The contents of these categories can be sorted by file name, the number of cedars or leeches, the date posted, etc. Pirate Byron described the Pirate Bay as a long-running project of performance art. Normally, the front page of the Pirate Bay featured a drawing of a pirate ship with the logo of the 1980s anti-copyright infringement campaign, Home Taping is Killing Music, on its sales. Technical details Initially, the Pirate Bay's four Linux servers ran a custom web server called Hypercube. An old version is open source. On 1 June 2005, the Pirate Bay updated its website in an effort to reduce bandwidth usage, which was reported to be at 2 HTTP requests per millisecond on each of the four web servers, as well as to create a more user-friendly interface for the front end of the website. The website now runs light and PHP on its dynamic front ends, MySQL at the database back end, Sphinx on the two search systems, Memcached for caching SQL queries and PHP sessions and Varnish in front of Lite for caching static content. The Pirate Bay consisted of 31 dedicated servers including 9 dynamic web fronts, a database, 2 search engines, and 8 BitTorrent trackers. On 7 December 2007, the Pirate Bay finished the move from Hypercube to OpenTracker as its BitTorrent tracking software, also enabling the use of the UDP tracker protocol for which Hypercube lacked support. This allowed UDP multicast to be used to synchronize the multiple servers with each other much faster than before. OpenTracker is free software. In June 2008, the Pirate Bay announced that their servers would support SSL encryption in response to Sweden's new wiretapping law. On 19 January 2009, 
the Pirate Bay launched IPv6 support for their tracker system, using an IPv6-only version of Open Tracker. On 17 November 2009, the Pirate Bay shut off its tracker service permanently, stating that centralized trackers are no longer needed since distributed hash tables, peer exchange, and magnet links allow peers to find each other and content in a decentralized way. On 20 February 2012, the Pirate Bay announced in a Facebook post that after the 29th of February the site would no longer offer torrent files and would instead offer only magnet links. The site commented, not having torrents will be a bit cheaper for us, but it will also make it harder for our common enemies to stop us. The site added that torrents being shared by fewer than 10 people will retain their torrent files to ensure compatibility with older software that may not support magnet links. Early financing In April 2007, a rumor was confirmed on the Swedish talk show Bert that the Pirate Bay had received financial support from right-wing entrepreneur Carl Lundström. This caused some consternation since Lundström an heir to the Vossebrut fortune, is known for financing several far-right political parties and movements like Sverigedemokraterna and Bavaris Varia Svenskt. During the talk show, Pirat Byron spokesman Tobias Anderson acknowledged that, without Lundström's support, Pirate Bay would not have been able to start, and stated that most of the money went towards acquiring servers and bandwidth donations. From 2004 until 2006, the Pirate Bay had a donate link to a donations page which listed several payment methods, stated that funds supported only the tracker, and offered time-limited benefits to donors such as no advertisements and VIP status. After that, the link was removed from the home page, and the donations page only recommended donating to your local pro-piracy group for a time, after which it redirected to the site's main page. Billboard claimed that the site in 2009 appeals for donations to keep its service running. In 2006, Petter Nielsen, a candidate on the Swedish political reality show Top Candidat Turner, donated 35,000 Swedish kroner to the Pirate Bay, which they used to buy new servers. In 2007, the site ran a fund intended to buy Sealand a platform with debated micro-nation status. In 2009, the then-convicted principals of TPB requested that users stop trying to donate money for their fines, because they refused to pay them. In 2013, the Pirate Bay published its Bitcoin address on the site front page for donations, as well as Litecoin. Advertising Since 2006, the website has received financing through advertisements on result pages. According to speculations by Svenska Dagbladet, the advertisements generate about 600,000 Swedish kroner per month. In an investigation in 2006, the police concluded that the Pirate Bay brings in 1.2 million sec per year from advertisements. The prosecution estimated in the 2009 trial from emails and screenshots that the advertisements pay over 10 million sec a year, but the indictment used the estimate from the police investigation. The lawyers of the site's administrators counted the 2006 revenue closer to 725,000 Swedish kroner. The verdict of the first trial however quoted the estimate from the preliminary investigation. IFP claims that the website is extremely profitable and that the Pirate Bay is more engaged in making profit than supporting people's rights. The website has insisted that these allegations are not true, stating, It's not free to operate a website on this scale, and, if we were making lots of money I, Svartholm, wouldn't be working late at the office tonight, and be sitting on a beach somewhere, working on my tan. In response to claims of annual revenue exceeding 3 million US dollars made by the IFP, the site's spokesman Peter Sund argues that the website's high bandwidth, power, and hardware costs eliminate the potential for profit.
The Pirate Bay, he says, may ultimately be operating at a loss. In the 2009 trial, the defense estimated the site's yearly expenses to be 800,000 Swedish kronor. There have been unintentional advertisers. In 2007, an online ad agency placed Valmart The Simpsons DVD ads, along with search results that included downloads of the series. In 2012, Banner ads for Canada's Department of Finance Economic Action Plan were placed to top search results, as part of a larger, media buy, but were pulled, quickly. Fee According to the site's usage policy, it reserves the right to charge commercial policy violators. A basic fee of €5,000 plus bandwidth and other costs that may arise due to the violation. Co-founder Peter Sunder accused Swedish book publishers who scraped the site for information about copyrighted books, of violating the usage policy, and asserted TPB's copyright on its database. Projects The team behind the Pirate Bay has worked on several websites and software projects of varying degrees of permanence. In 2007, Bay Image, an image hosting website similar to TinyPic went online in June. Pre-publication images posted to Bay Image became part of a legal battle when Condé Nast's network was later allegedly hacked. In July, within hours after Ingmar Bergman's death, BergmanBits.com was launched, listing torrents for the director's films online until mid-2008. In August, the Pirate Bay relaunched the BitTorrent website Supernova.org to perform the same functions as the Pirate Bay, with different torrent trackers. But the site languished. The domain was returned to its original owner in August 2010, and it now redirects to torrentfreak.tv. Superbay.org was introduced in August as the official forum for the PirateBay.org and the various sites connected to it. Users can request reseeding of torrents, or report malware within torrent files or illegal material on the PirateBay.org. Boink was announced in October in response to the raid on Oink's Pink Palace, a music-oriented BitTorrent website. A month later Sunda cancelled Boink, citing the many new music websites created since the downfall of ONK. A Mac dashboard widget was released in December, listing top 10 stuff currently on TPB, either per category or the full list. Slopsbox, a disposable email address anti-spam service, also appeared in December. and was reviewed in 2009. In 2008, Baywords was launched as a free blogging service that lets users of the site blog about anything as long as it does not break any Swedish laws. In December, The Pirate Bay resurrected Share Reactor as a combined Ed 2K and BitDorrent site. The same month, the Via Mobile Video Converter was released, designed to convert video files for playback on mobile devices such as iPhone. BlackBerry, Android, many Nokia and Windows mobile devices. In 2009, PasteBay, a note sharing service similar to Pastebin, was made available to the public as of the 23rd of March. The Video Bay video streaming slash sharing site was announced in June to be the YouTube killer, with content viewable in HTML5 capable browsers. The site was in an extreme beta phase. A message on the homepage instructed the user, don't expect anything to work at all. The Video Bay was never completed and the Video Bay is inaccessible. On the 18th of April 2011, Pirate Bay temporarily changed its name to Research Bay, collaborating with peer-to-peer -peer researchers of the Lund University Cyber Norms Group in a large poll of peer-to-peer -peer users.
the researchers published their results online on the Survey Bay, as a public Creative Commons project in 2013. In January 2012, the site announced the promo Bay Doodles by selected musicians, artists, and others could be rotated onto the site's front page at a future date. Brazilian novelist Paulo Coelho was promoted, offering a collection of his books for free download. By November, 10,000 artists were reported to have signed up. TPB preserves a dated collection of exhibited logos. On 2 December 2012, some ISPs in the UK such as BT, Virgin Media and B started blocking the promo bay but stopped a few days later, when the BPR reversed its position. Purchases In January 2007, when the micronation of Sealand was put up for sale, the Ikfi and the Pirate Bay tried to buy it. The Sealand government however did not want to be involved with the Pirate Bay, as it was their opinion that file sharing represented theft of proprietary rights. A new plan was formed to buy an island instead, but this too was never implemented. Despite the website having raised 25,000 US dollars in donations for this cause, the peer-to-peer -peer news blog Torrent Freak reported on 12 October 2007 that the internet domain ifb.com which previously belonged to the International Federation of the Phonographic Industry, an anti-piracy organization, had been acquired by the Pirate Bay. When asked about how they got hold of the domain, Sunda told Torrent Freak, it's not a hack, someone just gave us the domain name. We have no idea how they got it, but it's ours and we're keeping it. The website was renamed, the International Federation of Pirates Interests. However, the IFB filed a complaint with the World Intellectual Property Organization shortly thereafter, which subsequently ordered the Pirate Bay to return the domain name to the IFP. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?